the moment being not just a political moment, but the connection of the legislation to things that are happening in the society. So we do not do anything out of fear here. When we don't like something, we ask for it to go to the Joint Select Committee. When it comes here, if we have to make amendments, we do it as we did with the wealth bill. Um, and we play the role of the opposition, which is to critically support. If we like something, we support it. If we don't like something, we don't support it. And we say we don't like it. Why we don't like it. And when we have a situation where a compromise is possible, we also signal that. But the Prime Minister talked about corruption in the society generally. He talked, he didn't use the word plenty, but he did talk about. Timmy, can I interrupt, Sean? Yes, I was asking my friend Karen Central if you would give way, Madam Speaker. All right. No, 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 no. No, I do not wish to give way, Madam Speaker. Continue. I wanted to make like this. And that puts sent it. Continue, Karen Central. Yes, he, he said that there was corruption in the society, and we agree. There is corruption in Trinidad and Tobago, as there is in almost every society. But we do not agree with the position of the members for St. Joseph that this is a corrupt society from top to bottom. We do not believe that everybody in this society is corrupt. Correct. 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 I, we believe that there is corruption. We believe that there are corrupt people. We believe that corrupt acts take place. We believe that some people yield to temptation more than others. But we also believe that there are honest people in this country, yeah. plenty of them, that, that they want good government and good governance. And we feel that at the end, people in Trinidad and Tobago, I mean, by and large, they want to have a good government that governs well, and by that they mean fairly. They want a system that allows due respect for the citizen. Uh, so that they can go about the building of their lives and the management of a life which prepares them for their children's next generation benefits. And they also want to have a place, which is where this whistleblowing legislation comes into play, where if something is going wrong and the institutions are not working, they are not functioning, they want to have an opportunity, or they want to know that they have a safe place where they can get something done so that something will be done about it. And part of the frustration of the population is that they see things happening all around, and they are not seeing any responses. They are not seeing any consequences, and therefore, they get upset. But in doing a piece of legislation such as this, we have to ask ourselves some questions. And these were raised by some of the speakers before, both on our side and on the government side. And that issue is, what kind of societal culture do you need, Madam Speaker, to support whistleblowing legislation as a contribution to public good? Because we have to understand that that is the intention of this piece of legislation, although it doesn't say so. The idea is to create the conditions in which an individual citizen feeling moved to do so can make a contribution to the public good. And at the end of the day, the purpose of it is good governance. And the we, some people talked about the breakdown of um, ethics in the private sector. I think it was my colleague from Tabaki who talked about that. And we all know that one of the issues in governance and in government everywhere, including Trinidad and Tobago, but also elsewhere, is the business of corruption in the public apparatus of the state. So the issue is how what is the culture that you need for that? And it is becoming even more fierce because we know from 2008 there has been a kind of 
collapse of the ethical foundations of the whole capitalist order, that is one thing. And we certainly know that what is happening everywhere is that constitutions are being tested, whether it's by our neighbor in Venezuela or whether it is in the epitome of so-called democracies in this hemisphere, which is the United States of America. So there is constitutional testing at the political level, and we have had the collapse of the ethical foundations within the private sector made very, very clear in 2008, 2009. So it's a problem. So you, we are trying to build this legislation and to present this legislation now in this kind of climate where we are also affected, because we were affected, Madam Speaker, by the 2008-2009 crisis here in the matter of the big insurance company called Clico and others that were affected during that period. But we, were also, we are also affected by issues. So for instance, in our time when we were in government, we did the procurement legislation. It took us a little while to get it to the parliament, but we passed that legislation and it was precisely People need to remember that there might have been 10 or 12 years that had passed with that legislation trying to make it to birth. And it was the People's Partnership that nursed that process in order to create the conditions for the passage of that legislation. So we, you need a certain culture in order to do it. What type of institutional system is necessary? Now, we know that there are realities if you go to work in a certain place. For instance, if you be, be in a cabinet of a country, there is such a thing as confidentiality of cabinet and collective responsibility. If you are in the public service, you know that there are certain things which require you to be confidential about as part of the public service operations. If you work in a private sector institution, depending on the level that you are, you might be asked to even sign something which says confidentiality, secrecy, etc. And therefore, if you have this element present in your society, whether in the public or private sector, and you have legislation like this, you immediately have a conflict of intention and a conflict of interest, and you put an employee or a potential whistleblower in a position where at some point in time they have to choose. And the protection offered by the, the legislation, I want to say, my problem with the legislation is that I am not sure that it offers enough protection to the whistleblower. And at the same time, it has the propensity to create the conditions for a massive news-making society, a news-carrying society. It is, it is that extremity which you need to contain, which I think is absent or missing in the bill, and I think not thoughtfully rendered, all right, in the uh, what you call it, the composition of the bill, Madam Speaker. Now, what objective is support for whistleblowing meant to serve? I mentioned the issue of the public good, and this is important. And one of the questions that arises is public good superior to individual rights and individual freedoms? 